Hi, I'm Erin Larkin and I'm here with John Jens at Lamont's Wine Store and we are doing part one of two Chardonnay tastings. Um, what we've done is focused on six of our favourite Chardonnays um, from Western Australia and Australia, but uh, our list actually included a lot more than this. So we have had to scale it back so that we can do a portion of them this week and a portion of them next week because it would be remiss to exclude some of the people that we have excluded so far. Um, in terms of tasting order, we're starting with the Vas Felix and we're finishing with the Devil's Lair Ninth Chamber, Vas Felix being in glass number two and uh, Devil's Lair being in the last glass. Um, I have brought something in which is a little bit cheeky, uh, but it's a, it's a, sorry. Is that what you've snuck into the first glass? It is, it is. But it's this small winery from Margaret River. I love what they do. The wines um, are much cheaper than the, the big guys on the table here. And so it's not quite in the same category, but they're bloody delicious and I just think that they need a bit of airtime because I love them um, so is it okay but I'm going to show you this wine why are you looking behind me oh because um, okay so this is from Windows Estate they're on Caves Road this is their Petit Lot Chardonnay from 2018 and I've put it into wine glass number one because I just wanted to see it with a little bit of company if that's right retails at about 45 bucks the 2017 uh, got a, a whopping 97 points from James Halliday and the 18 was a, a as we know a magnificent vintage so I'm expecting big big things um, we decanted all of these wines before we got going finds that it helps open them up and sort of give them their best opportunity to shine While Erin's got a mouthful, which at a tasting like this is easy to understand. Um, so, I have 260,000 tasting notes. I computerised the Western Australian ones, so I reckon I've got thoughts. Whether they, other people agree or not, it doesn't matter, but I've got positions on various wines. I am telling you, absolutely and totally from my point of view, Australia has never made wines and Chardonnays like this ever before. These, this is the great lineup of Australian Chardonnays, and as Erin said, there's others we wanted to add in, just couldn't, couldn't fit into the first lot, but you wait till you see the next lot. Um, there are just great wines. These are brilliant. Wine technology, oak selection, uh, better, better technology and knowledge in the vineyards. And I listen to the way that winemakers talk for two hours at a time about their barrel selections and usage and how they experiment with it. Everything's different now. We have never seen wines like this. We're incrementally getting better and better, and well, as for you guys, it's this way, getting better and better and better as time goes on. These are great wines. Yeah. This is a great lineup. Yeah. Um, just to close out on that windows, I just want to tell you what it tastes like. Um, it's a really spicy, savoury, textural wine. This is not fine and pretty and, and, and um light this is concentrated intense powerful layered but it's got really racy acidity and a really nice salty kind of curry leaf character on it and i just love it and i think for 45 dollars it punches well above its weight and i had to include it um yeah moving into these big boys because um these are pretty serious pretty serious wines uh not that that wasn't but these are massive so um starting with the hate spree I'm going to come right out and say it. I think this is the best uh, Chardonnay that Vas Felix have ever released. This makes me deeply happy. I think it's perfectly complete and balanced now. It's got explosive power on the palate. Um, it's salty, it's textural, it's exciting. It's, it's pretty much everything that I want in a Chardonnay. Okay, the other angle. Um, that, I, actually, last week in our Cabernet video, uh, video I made an error. Um, Virginia Wilcock, the great winemaker and her team, um, she arrived in 2006 at Vas Felix. Um, almost every year, as, uh, as the years go by, the wines have got better. Um, I love the 13 of these. Loved it. Just think it's fantastic because they all, in my opinion, all of the Vasculix H3 Chardonnays need a touch of time to show what they can. They yeah. need to relax and shake those shoulders <laughs> out a little bit, add a little, little bit of air in and relax. Um, they need time over a couple of years to do that. But 
When I talk to the Vast Felix people, they keep coming back to 2010. They love the 2010. That's great. It's delicious, round, balanced, seamless, tremendous length, lovely finish, lovely aftertaste. But the wines since then have got better length. Remember last week we said that length is the key to quality. I believe that these wines have got greater length now for any one of a number of reasons. In my book, the wines that we're seeing now will be better than the 2010. I'm not talking about the drinking window. I'm talking about how I perceive them in terms of quality. This is, I agree with Erin, the best Vast Felix Chardonnay made to date. And I also thought that the 17, which I wanted to put on today, but Erin said, we've got too many wines. Full house Kick is what I out. said. <laughs> and um, so, um, because the 17 was very good. It's very good. Bit of fruit in the middle palate, bit of stuck around either side. This is longer, racier, a little bit crisper, a little bit tighter, enormous length, class act. I love it. And as I've already said, uh, these include some of the great Australian Chardonnays. This could be, and I think it probably is, the best Australian Chardonnay lineup I've seen. Um, on the 17, 17 was a cooler vintage in Margs, and I think often uh, wines from cooler vintages, for my palate certainly, uh, provide quite a bit of excitement because they have a, a leanness and a, a raciness to them. This 18 seems to combine all of the interest and the raciness and the excitement of the 17 and then add this extra layer that is known as 2018 to it, and I love it. It's like, it's kind of like brine and grilled yellow peach, and there's like kelp and all these delicious things in there, and I just, yeah, I, look, I really want to drink that. I love it. I love it. Greater length than yeah. any HP Chardonnay to date in my book. Ah, <laughs> Cullen. Vanya Cullen, we talked on uh, the Cabernets last week and Vanya packing flavour into Chardonnays. Oh, sorry, into Cabernets. Vanya also packs flavour into Chardonnays. Whatever it is, whatever her team do down there, whether it's the soil what, or their team, there's a great complexity in the wines. In masked lineups, I invariably pick, I won't say invariably, but more often than any other wine in Australia, I pick Vanya Chardonnays as coming from France and always, always, every time when I do, it's coming from Merceau. In a masked lineup, I'm going along, yes, yes, yes. That doesn't compute. What is it? Go, go, yep, 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 yep. Go back. That wine doesn't compute. How good is it? How do I rate it? How good is it? I just don't understand it. Don't think, well, hang on. If that was a French wine and that was a Merceau, I'd say it was sensational. Mm -hmm. That's exactly where I'm here. Fuller, now, you and I have slightly diverging views on this. Fuller, rounder, longer, packed with flavour, beautiful structuring tannins down either side, that length and finish and aftertaste that we often talk about. A um, little bit more placid fruit in the middle, but a lot of fruit in there. Going to be sensational. Length and finish. Say it's a great wine. I know Erin's saying, I think you're saying that um, this is your star at the moment here. At the moment, I would drink the Cullen, but I still love this, but I've given them both equal points. Great wines, love them. I think for my, um, on my page, the Cullen Kevin John has got incredible concentration and intensity of fruit. It's really, I mean, like it's, it's wow. Um, but the very interesting and beautiful part about that wine for me is the phenolic structure because it has a, a chalky sort of grip through it, which creates an extra level of excitement and interest in my mouth. That's not just about fruit or um, acidity. It's got this really like third dimension and I really love that about that wine. Um, I'm going to jump. A touch more worked perhaps than this. Sorry, go on. Perhaps, yeah, you, you're going to jump. Yep. I'm going to jump into the, the Penfolds Reserve Bin A because this is the first time I've tried this wine. I tried to call Kim Schroeder, the winemaker, earlier just to get his insight on it because I didn't actually even know the 18 was released. So I'm obviously thrilled to look at it. I've been a, a long time fan of it. Um, this is better than I could have hoped. Without his uh, feedback in terms of what the vintage was like for him, I can't properly tell you that just yet, although I might be able to fill you in next week. Um, this is sensational. I mean, it is. It's got like a, like a, like a shimmering kind of rocket fuel kind of power and, and, and weight to it. It's just it's bloody awesome. But it's also pristine and fine and crystalline. And the contrast between the two, the tension is just... Mate, it's good. I want to come back. It's good. I want to come back to rocket fuel. Can you explain mm. that? <laughs> Sorry, while you're, th while you're thinking about that. Penfolds. 
Um, in my youth, Penfolds were the key to wine in Australia. The, sh- the, ca- the Shiraz, and it was all Shiraz in those days, um, there was 707, but it was a tiny proportion of what they do. Penfolds, in, when I was young, uh, in the 70s and 80s when I was buying wine, and I'll tell you right now, I had 15 dozen grains by the age of 24. I was a fanatic, as well as tens of dozens of other Penfolds reds. I'm a Penfolds man. I love Penfolds. And I'm telling you right now, and I know, I reckon, I believe I know, Penfolds have never been better. They are sensational. But in recent years, and especially with Erin's friend, Kim Schroeder, who's a great mate of hers and uh, a great winemaker, international winemaker of the year at the International, at the international Wine Challenge, uh, three or four years ago, very, very good winemaker, picked up four or five trophies for Ch- four trophies for Chardonnays in one year against the world's greatest, 15,000 wines, wow. uh, International Wine Challenge three or four years ago. Great winemaker, has taken Penfolds to the front with Peter Gago of what Australia's doing in Chardonnay. They're wonderful, truly wonderful. Slightly different style to what we're doing over here. Delicious, long, placid, um, uh, acid still, acid core still down the middle, enormous length, Great finish, great aftertaste. I, I, I've already said, uh, as with the Cabernets last week, I can't differentiate too far in points on this. You're talking about point 0.1 or point 0.2 of a point. These are great wines. They're all fantastic. That is just another great wine. It is. Yeah, there's a... Just looking back at it again, the fruit, all of the fruit is beautiful. There's like a salted white stone fruit sort of vibe to that. But there's also a, a creamy crushed nut back palate, which is really really delicious and combining those two things with the acidity together um, makes that a very exciting wine. Okay so let's throw in a touch more if we could be short we may run out of time here with the BNA the 18 2018 BNA Penfolds also have Yatana. In the over the years as I said last week Erin and I tasted a lot together now for many years um, the Yatana I've loved the style over the years and I always put this a touch behind. In some of those years, Erin preferred this to the Yatana. Um, in recent years, I've come to agree with Erin. I'm actually preferring this by a whisker in the last two or three vintages, and, but I still love the Yatana. It's one of Australia's greatest Chardonnays, without question, just that this is now in the top two or three. Um, and Yatana's probably in the top four or five. So we're talking about two in the top five or six Chardonnays in the country. The Penfolds are producing great wines. I love this, love Yatana, they're good wines. I think, I think also the um, premium Chardonnays, maybe it's just my perception, I'm not sure, but I, I, I see them sitting in the shadow of the reds um, and I am each year, those, the two, the Yutana and the Reserve Bin Chardonnay are each year at the release often my favourite wines of the day. Not saying the reds aren't amazing, just saying how great they are. In the Rhone Valley in Shiraz... <laughs> In Cote Rote and Hermitage, in the years gone by, the reds were always the famous one, the whites were in the shadows. In recent years, all the whites have been getting higher points. Internationally, Penfolds are getting better reviews and more awards for Chardonnays under Kim Schroeder's guidance than they are for the reds, despite the fact that the reds are creating a name for Australian wines all over the world. They're the Peter Gago led team are just doing an extraordinary job mm. with Australian red wines as well as these. Um, I believe that Gago and his team are the greatest winemakers in Australia and with due deference to a number of the other people involved here, because of the cross-section of wines they do, I reckon Vanya Cullen deservedly won the James Halliday uh, Chardonnay, uh, sorry, um, winemaker of the year last year. And one thing I didn't say a second ago on Vanya was that she also releases the Legacy series now, uh, tiny quantities of Chardonnays. The 2013-2014 uh, many of the international wine reviewers have said they're amongst the greatest Chardonnays ever made in Australia. I agree totally. And now the 2016 is on the market. Too young, needs time. There hasn't been one since. There's no 17, no 18, no 19, and I don't think a 20, to my knowledge. The 16 is going to be a great wine. And there was only about, I think, 70 dozen made. I've got a couple up my sleeve. And maybe <laughs> if Aaron's really what lucky, I'll open one next time. <laughs> uh, but, um, but I reckon Vanya is a great maker truly great maker and I reckon that 16 Legacy Series, if you can get it, um, get hold of it and, but put it down for a little while. And Erin also mentioned decanting these wines earlier. Oh yeah, whenever we decant, Whenever we put on wines like these in our restaurants, we have four restaurants, um, we, decant, we pour a control glass, maybe about that size, just a few, um, 30, 40 mils, maybe 60 mils, 50 mils, pour a control glass, pour, we carry a swag of decanters here, just backwards and forwards, 
eight or nine times, anything that's been in wood, uh, Pinot, Shiraz, Cabernet, Chardonnay, back, uh, then back into the bottle, pour from the bottle, and when people say, well, what are you doing that for? What's the point? I show them the new glass versus the control. They can't believe it. They couldn't recognise it. We always, with wines like this when they're young, mm. to give them that decanting that Erin was talking about. It just, it kind of takes the edge off a bit and just allows the fruit to come out a little bit. The spices become more obvious. Um, it doesn't do anything to the acidity, but it just seems to integrate it a bit better or something. It allows I'm not sure. air into yeah. the wine, which allows the fruit volumes to build, I believe, yeah. which then hides the tannin, hides the acidity a touch. It does. And, and the difference is marked. And when people look at the two glasses side by side in here, um, they often go, wow, maybe we should decant Chardonnay. We agree. Um, okay, uh, the Chardonnay number four in, in your fifth glass. Yes. Um, is the Lewin Estate 17. So this is their current release. Speaking of cooler vintages, obviously, like we said before, 17 was a cooler vintage than, than 16, which preceded it. Um, I am a ver like a whisker behind uh, the 17, put the 17 a whisker behind the 16, but think that they're both glorious wines. This is, in, to me, a really recognisable wine in a blind lineup because it's, there's a glossiness and a polish to it that just speaks so clearly of Lewin. I don't think that it's a particularly modern style of Chardonnay, but it's, it's an inarguably beautiful Chardonnay that has just got incredible length. And, I, and it's sort of once it hits a mid-palate, that, that's when you know you've got Lewin in your mouth. It just takes it and runs. It's great. Um, we did the Cabernet tasting... Last week, look, I better ask Erin here, how much time have we got? We don't, we don't plan these. We just get up and start talking. How much time have we got? A couple of minutes. We're in trouble. Um, the, um, I reckon we got, we got some feedback from Eastern States people last week, including winemakers, saying we were a bit pro-Western Australian. Well, of course we are. We <laughs> make great wine. But seriously, we know that there are great wines in the East too, as, as, as we've already mentioned. Lewin Estate, I reckon they produced, and probably Halliday would agree, in fact, Halliday's sponsor would show it, probably... Um, Five of the best 10 and 10 of the best 20 Chardonnays ever made in Australia. I reckon they're extraordinary. I'm a little bit ahead of... Oops, sorry, I'm this guy here. I'm a little bit ahead of this one uh, on where Erin is. I reckon in this lineup, um, more fruit-driven than the complexity of many of these, but it has, and has slightly t greater life, enormous length, beautiful texture. I really like it a lot, and I don't have any more time to keep talking it's about it. Unassailable length, yeah. that's what that is. Yeah. Um, moving into the Yarra Valley with the Mount Mary. So this, this is a really, I think in, for me, a much more traditional style of Chardonnay. Um, really dense, lots of flavour, very concentrated. Um, what, what's your feeling on this? Like, I love this. This will deliver some uh, great pleasure to people that want a, a more densely built Chardonnay, I think. Do you, is that the right way to say that? Um, I'd, coming I'm, at it from a slightly different angle. Yeah. So over the years... Uh, John Middleton made the wines. In my opinion, and I didn't get to see a lot of them, I've bought a lot of the reds, but very little of the Chardonnays, but when I tried the reds or occasionally the Pinots, which I loved, um, I thought they were a little bit more French-like than most Australian people were doing, starting to show well. Good acidity, yeah. Oh, yeah, great. Really uh, I thought they were a little bit more French-like than many Australian Chardonnays at the time. They were made in the traditional ways and they were done brilliantly. Uh, I love them. I, in this instance... Um, you know, last week we looked at the Quintet, thought it was absolutely staggering, absolutely wonderful. That's a, mm. that's a really good wine, and Aaron loved it, and I think it, mm. well, I won't, I, don't, I won't try and put words in the mouth. Um, in this instance, a little bit, um, uh, oh, it has everything. Worked, complex, uh, richness, but res with restraint, finish, aftertaste. Um, it's I like it very, very much, yeah. and as we said also last week, two years ago, winemaker of the year, and they only make about four wines that they're really, that they're really serious about. Um, Lovely wine. Yeah, it is. Um, it's a really good entry point to the next wine. Which So we're sort of looking at a cascade of style here. Winery of the year, not winemaker of the year, sorry. Yeah. Winery of the yeah, year. Yeah. Um, so the de this is the 2015 Devil's Land Ninth Chamber. So this is their premium wine. They don't make it every year. 2015 produced, um, was low yielding here and produced Chardonnays of really great concentration and intensity. And I loved the 15 Chardonnays. Loved the 15 Chardonnays. Um, this is a very uh, concentrated and intense wine. This is not um, finesse or lithe or um, light. This is this is um, this is like dense. There's hints of butterscotch. It's got a 
really mineral theme of citrus through the middle, yellow peach. What do you see on it? What I see? Devil's Lair was founded by Phil Sexton and myself many years ago, so we've got a long history with it. In the first three years, on two occasions, um, the winery won the wine show of Mount Barker's wine of, wine of the year, the, the wine of the show. Um, and so it started off with a bang. It was, and one was a Pinot, one was a Cabernet, uh, the 1990 Cab. Uh, and um, that was the first year. Quite extraordinary. Uh, they've now expanded exponentially. Erin uh, and I have looked at a lot of their wines over the years and a lot recently, including virtually every Cabernet and every Chardonnay made to date. Wonderful lineup, wonderful tasting. The 15s were the, mm. the, the, the Chardonnays to me that stood out. But what we really wanted to show you this time were the new 2017s and hopefully the 2018s coming up. But there's none in Western Australia now. Yeah. I rang wine stores, the wholesalers said they've, or the distributors uh, said that there's more coming in about two weeks, but I didn't want to miss out. I wanted to look at a devil's lair. So in my view, that was the best Chardonnay of the tasting we did. 30 or 40 odd Chardonnays. Yeah, I believe so. And, then, and I thought that was the pick of them, so that's why I wanted to put it into this lineup. Um, actually, though, speaking of this Ninth Chamber wine, I had a moment a couple of years ago, uh, Kate Lamont came around for dinner, and, and I was like, oh, Kate, Kate's famous for liking good Chardonnay. Kate right? Lamont is a Western Australian chef. Kate Lamont is, a, is John's wife, <laughs> um, a famous Western Australian chef, amongst many other things, um, and loves Chardonnay, good Chardonnay. You can't mess around and give it anything cheap, right? So, so we started with the 2011 Devil's Lair Ninth Chamber, and I thought it was going to be good. I mean, I knew it was going to be good, but I was astounded, and I can still taste it if I think about it, um, about the acidity and the intensity of that wine. I mean, there's something about this style, in my opinion, that tastes better when it's a bit older. And I don't always say that, but this wine in, on my page um, is best at sort of five, six seven years of age as that was and I, when we looked at the 11 in the tasting that John's talking about um, at the beginning of this year I thought the same thing about the 11 actually I mean I love it the 15 is probably a slightly better wine but the 11 really had my heart um, and can we just say about we can, I know we you've can got to finish just say up, is that um, at the various price ranges they have many, many price ranges these days the more reasonably priced wines are very good I mean they're well made very good value for money wines sorry yep we must be running on time. I was just Sorry. going to wrap up um, by saying it was very, very difficult to come up with just six wines today, seven when you include the one that I snuck in. Um, and we have left out some of our favourite wines um, in favour of, of showing them next week because it, it's kind of like choosing between children, I think. <laughs> and Margaret River has got a, a – actually Australia has got a, a luxurious wealth of great Chardonnay. Um, and so we had to split it. And even two is not enough, but we do what we can. Here, here. <laughs> we yeah. do what we can. Um, probably doesn't need to be said, but um, today my two picks are, are these. I can't decide which I prefer over one or the other, but they're bloody good. I mean, I've, really, And I've really got so good. many friends in the Western Australian wine industry, I don't want to lose them. I reckon these are great wines and I love them all. And I'm telling you, there's almost nothing between them. Australian yes, Chardonnay yeah. has never been better. These are great wines. We commend them wholly. Um, thanks. God bless. Thank you.